This is Tucker, and today we're going to go ahead and try to get the old uh, front clip of the Blue Goose mounted down to the Buick Roadmaster chassis. So we're going to go ahead and start clearing away a little stuff, cutting away at the frame, moving stuff back to where we can get that, that front clip mounted, and that way we can be a little bit closer here to, to blasting this old girl down the road. All right, I think we've kind of come to a, a point here now where, you know, things are getting kind of close on getting this front splash pan put in here. Um, I need to, to get a little bit better idea exactly where those fenders are going to be. And there's no way of doing that without them being bolted on and lined up with the doors perfectly. And when I pulled them off, there's that lower brace on these fenders. And like I said, they twisted off and those lower braces are pretty rotten. So even if I took and got the uh, stud out or the broken off bolt and stuff it's they're not going to be real solid when I bolt them back on so I think I'm going to have to go ahead and pull this fender off and take the other fender I'm going to get it welded up and put them on here to where they're lined up perfect with the doors that way I know I'm getting the right alignment here because uh, I've had a bad habit in the past of getting in a hurry and start trimming away stuff and and then you end up taking off more than you really need to and then you got to put it back and I just don't want to do that with this so I'm going to fix these fenders, get them mounted on here, probably get the hood on here too because, you know, that has a lot to do with your height up and down on your fenders. That affect, it, it all kind of goes together and affects everything. So uh, I'm going to fix these fenders real quick and then we'll get back on to this part of the project. All right, well, it's been a couple days there, but we was able to get the uh, fenders welded up, get some new braces put on the inside of them so we can get them bolted on the old goose here uh, in between. And I was also able to haul in an old 63 panel truck that I found that's pretty cool and uh, I was even able to get my ears lifted in between so now that I've got all that stuff squared away heck we're gonna go ahead and get back on this front end and get her mounted down to this Roadmaster chassis
All right, I thought I'd take a moment here to kind of show everybody where we're at so far. Uh, I went ahead and cut, like I said, the top side of the frame off here, back about four inches. And like I said, here's the piece that I, I cut out of it. I kind of took a little bit out of each side there to get this splash pan to fit down in here. We might have to cut a little bit more. I'm just kind of going slowly here to uh, kind of get it sized up and fitting down in here to see where we're at. Uh, the splash pan that I used on this one is kind of bent up, you know, on each end here. Uh, a little bit over here, it's one that I had laying around that I picked up at a swap meet real cheap because it was kind of banged up. Uh, I didn't want to cut the one up that was on the Blue Goose because it had a lot of surface rust, but it was a lot straighter than this one. And so I didn't want one that, you know, that I was going to have to cut into. I'd rather save it for a future project, maybe an original one or something. But Because uh, what we had to do, we had to cut a little bit of that splash pan up here just to make a little relief for it to slide back for the gearbox. But so far, that's the only spot we had to do. And it's about a two and a half inch cut. Uh, just to kind of get it to come around there and clear a little bit So it looks like that's going to come out fairly decent there um, The inner fenders will actually just come right up on top Of the splash pan here and if a guy wants to run these original style inner fenders All I all a guy needs to do is come in here and put a little tab on here Where you can just directly bolt it down on there And then to keep water and and stuff from splashing up you can come in and just uh, You know make like a little panel here to fill this little gap here or you could actually just use some kind of a, a weather stripping or something just to kind of seal that in because it's not really that big of a gap and actually these inner fenders fit the fender well fairly nice on here on the upper areas you know I had to take a hammer and dolly to it a little bit and kind of get it to shape but you can see the contour of them it's just pretty tight all the way along there until you get clear down here towards the very bottom where that original fender has that lip you can kind of see there. So a guy could actually come in and and uh, make a little piece there to tie all that together. Or you could take some some of that poly material out of some of these aftermarket cars that have those inner fenders and probably just make something that could fit right in there. And you could take some uh, some weather stripping or something if you wanted and just you know stick it over the edge of that inner fender. You might have to work it in a little bit further to get that to work. But uh, if a guy wants to run these stock Roadmaster inner fenders, they wouldn't be too hard at all to to make them work under the stock 57 Chevy fenders. Uh, you, you definitely have to build you, you know, toward the, the rear of them, you're gonna have to add you a piece. But uh, I'll do that, you know, a little later on. It should be pretty straightforward, not too tough to do. So we're gonna go ahead and get back onto this. What I end up might doing is uh, we might end up taking this off eventually. I'm just kind of using it to hold everything into place on this, this original Roadmaster frame horn. I might go out and pull the frame horns off the Blue Goose's original frame and see about grafting them on here for uh, for the bumper brackets. I'm not sure if that's what I'm going to do yet. We'll just kind of keep whittling at it and seeing where, where we end up, but uh, that's just a, a possible option, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and straighten up this splash pan. It's, it's kind of whomped up here on both ends here. I don't know what somebody had going on there, but uh, like I said, I'll get it kind of hammer dollied and, and whomped out, just kind of roughed in. So I can get the grill and that that top panel on here, and I'm gonna get the hood and have everything lined up to where it fits where it, it needs to be. Because I wanted to really get all this front clip stuff figured out here before I weld the body on, just in case I do have to tweak it a little bit one way or the other. Because I'd hate to get it all welded on and then realize I ran into a problem. So we'll get moving on here and see where we end up.
Well, we got the old Blue Goose front clip pretty well bolted on here. Uh, the only thing I haven't done yet is the little mounts on the front here to support it to the Roadmaster chassis. But uh, had quite a little bit of trouble. It kind of kicked my butt. This uh, hood hinge here on this passenger side is totally worn out. It springs, springs up too high, so I had to adjust it down all the way. So eventually I'll have to find me another hood hinge for this side. And uh, another thing, the gap's kind of big right in here. Uh, if you've had any 57s or anything, uh, that's a real common deal. If they've ever gotten hit in the front end, it always drives this fender back and it hits this cowl area and always just, I mean, pushes them way back. So somebody had kind of straightened it up and put some Bondo in there at one time. When I'd gotten it, it was all cracked up, so I popped it on out of there to keep the water from just setting in there. But uh, I'm going to have to do a little straightening on this. That's why the gap's a little bit large right in here. But as far as the door goes, we got the door lines pretty well lined up. The, the hood gaps are pretty tight all the way around. Uh, we can do a little bit more up here to the front, but uh, it's, it's close enough now that we know that we're, and we're pretty squared up with the Roadmaster chassis, so we know we're pretty much on line to, to get it mounted you know, permanently here. So that's kind of where I wanted to get to make sure I knew that if it was going to mount all right without uh, having to move that body forward or back anymore, I want to make sure there wasn't any problems there before I burned that body on there. So uh, I went ahead and drug in a bumper here. I'm going to try to get it, kind of figure out how I'm going to mount it. I don't know if I'm going to use the original brackets or not. Uh, it, and like I said, I could cut off the, the horns off the uh, original frame and maybe graft them on there. But it's real common on these 57s too. You can see that with bumper brackets all kind of been tweaked. I haven't seen too many of these myself that weren't, weren't all boogered up from people you know, banging into the front of these because I've never had any real nice cars. So all of them I've had have been worked over about probably a dozen times. So I'm going to probably, for right now, pop them brackets off, bolt the bumper together, get it set on there with these outside fender brackets since they're already on each one of these fenders. I'll pull these ones off and kind of see what it's going to look like, get some closer measurements on what I need to mount the bumper because, like I said, I might end up making some kind of existing bracket you know a new style bracket to bolt it up off of the the roadmaster part here or I, like i said i might cut it cut off the original horns and put them on and use the stock brackets so i'm gonna get this bumper blowed apart real quick and then put back together without the brackets and get it hung on there and we'll see what we got Well, we finally got the Blue Goose mocked up where she needs to be on the front end here. And it looks to me like it's all going to line up and be all right. So I'm thinking we're going to uh, end up uh, definitely leaving her where she is. I think it's going to gonna work out great. I still haven't decided for sure how I'm going to mount the bumper. Um, it's, like I said, I've got a you know pretty good idea. Either, the, either weld the uh, stock frame horns on or or uh, just make some brackets off of it. Um, but uh, that's not gonna be too much of a problem, so I think and uh, she pretty much looks about right on everything here. It doesn't really look like a Roadmaster, so that was my big concern as I was kind of worried about it uh, looking like a Roadmaster, you know, if you could see through the grill or not, if I left all that inner stuff in there. But uh, I don't think, you know, maybe out in the daylight or something, 
somebody you know gets to staring at it pretty hard might might notice that it's not uh, not on original 57 hardware there but uh, most people I don't think is ever going to know any different so uh. all right well blue goose looks like she's got a little bit of a smile going on now but it's not not nearly as far along as I'd want her to be at this date but uh, you know I just had a whole bunch of other stuff going on I just didn't get get as much done on it as I wanted but uh, like I said uh, you know it's getting a little bit closer and I and I didn't have to mock it up quite to this degree you know to get an idea of how everything's gonna fit but sometimes on these big projects it kind of helps to go ahead and, and put it together kind of uh, close to what it's gonna look like when you get it all kind of done that way uh, it keeps the motivation factor up and uh, you know makes it look a little a little bit different when you put a bucket inside and sit on it and make motor noises and all that kind of stuff but uh, but I definitely need to hurry up and, and definitely get her going here so I can get that race to that Mustang done before that old Mustang lays down on us waiting, you know. So, And I want to get the old goose going so I can get her to town, get her on the street, see if we can stir up something with some new, some of these newer vehicles. But uh, like I said, and I appreciate everybody that's been following along and subscribed. And if you're new to the channel, you know, and see something, hit the subscribe button and uh, go back and look at some of the earlier videos. And uh, like I said, I'm going to be uh, finishing this thing up and, uh, you know, get some other projects going and stuff along the way. So uh, appreciate everybody and uh, until next time, take care.